And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower! Yes, welcome to Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. This is my daughter, Melody. And today we're going to be talking about Journey to the Center of the Earth from Mayfair Games. Now, this is based on the book by Jules Verne, Journey to the Centers of the Earth. And as that's one of my favorite books, I've always enjoyed that story. Pretty much I like anything Jules Verne wrote. And I always have a higher opinion of a game based on a book rather than a movie. I thought this would be an interesting one to try out. Let's look at the board here. The board is made up of three parts. Right now we're looking at the first part as they go down through one of the volcanoes in Iceland, down basically to the center of the Earth. And this takes up about 70% of the game. Now you may notice that there's three explorers. You use all three of these explorers, whether or not there's two, three, or four players in the game. How can you do that? If, which, which color would I play if I was playing? Everybody is everybody. Right, everybody is everybody in a sense. I don't know, maybe you're some corporal spirit, or I'm sorry, incorporal spirit floating around and controlling these guys. It doesn't really make any sense thematically. I really wish they had done something differently in this regard. But you can control any of these. When you're moving these people, and before I mention that, I'll say this. On your turn, you can do two things. You can either draw cards, or you draw three cards, or you can move one of these three explorers. When moving an explorer, you have to use a card that is their color. We have red cards for the red person, blue for the blue guy, and orange for the orange gentleman. Um, and you're moving them across the board, and so if I want to move the orange guy four spaces, I need to play four orange cards. But there are also tool cards that help you when you're moving. The first tool card is the rope card. It makes the jump over holes and whirlpools. Then there's the hardtack card. Uh, that basically counts as two cards of any color of the explore cards. So this could count as two orange explore cards. You also can play a maximum of five explore cards. So you can use this kind of as a way to cheat and play two more. Then there's the pickaxe. You can go through rocks for one, one point. Point, right, so but it used to be like three or two cards to go through. Right, depending I, on how many uh, uh, depending on how many rocks are in a spot, it costs three or two cards to move into that spot. And as you can see, there's rocks all over the place. This will let you move through rocks for only one space. Then there is the compass. You move diagonally. Diagonally, right. That lets you move diagonally. And then there's the light, and that helps you when you're digging for treasure. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. When you're moving on the board, there's different things you can get from landing on spots. There's question marks, which give you a uh, event card, and that event card is always good, so that's always worth going to. Then there are spots that give you a water stone, and these are these blue stones here. These stones are important because for every three treasure cards that you have, these are treasure cards here, for every three treasure cards you have, you need one water stone. So if you don't have them by the time you get to the end of this this area of the board. You lose your treasures. Right. Well, you don't lose all of them, but you'll have to discard down to three treasures per water stone. And then finally, there's a way to get treasures. On the board here, there's different symbols that match the tool cards. So, for example, if I land on this space here that shows a compass and a rope, I have to discard a compass and a rope card, and I'll get two treasures from the top of the deck. Now, these treasures can be a variety of things, but if I play a light card, a tool card, when I'm getting treasure... I can draw two more cards, look at all four of them, and then pick two that are discarded. So that basically gives you a chance to see what treasures you want. There's a decent variety of treasures. Some treasures are simply just worth two points, like this shell here. Other treasures are like this skull. By itself, it's worth zero points. Zero. But when you put both halves together... It's five points! Right. And then there's the skeleton, which is just like the skull. If you have one piece of the skeleton, one point, one point two... And two. It's three points, and all three of them is 12. And then there's gold and quartz, and these, basically, the more you have, the more the points are worth. And so there's different treasures that you can get, and you're trying to basically collect those. As soon as one of the explorers gets to the bottom, this round is immediately over. The person who makes the explorer get down there... It's a mushroom card! And that mushroom card is worth several points. Mm -hmm. And then players will start the second round of the game. They discard all the water stones. You don't need water anymore because you're entering water. And now the explorers are on this raft. Now, on this raft, players are moving, you, doing the exact same thing they did here, except if you move one explorer, they all, all the rest move with him because they're all moving on the raft. And eventually this raft will get to the end here. And, and you get a, um, then you get a temple card that's worth points also. And then at that point, the third part of the game, which takes, I think, a whole minute, starts. It takes really hard. 
Right, because you're shooting up through a volcano and coming out, and there's a good chance that you'll lose some of your treasure cards unless you've saved up tool cards. Once everyone comes out of here, you'll take all your treasure cards, you will total them up, and whoever has the most points wins. And that's pretty much how the game works. Now, how does the game play? I already mentioned that I had a little bit of trouble controlling, not really controlling my own explorer. The theme didn't seem to work. But other than that, the idea of going down the volcano, crossing the sea, and then, um, sorry, going down an extinct volcano, crossing the sea and coming up a live volcano is just like the books. And so I did appreciate that. The idea of drawing cards and playing cards, kind of like Ticket to Ride in a sense, I did enjoy that. You can have up to how many of these Explorer cards in your hand? Ten. And you can have how many tool cards in your hand? Five. And the tool cards are placed face up on the board, so you can draw face up tool cards, or you can draw um, uh, the ones from the top of the deck. And so there's that. I like that interplay. But for me, other than that, the game kind of, I don't know, I, I, it, it's almost boring in several aspects. You go, you draw treasure. I like the treasure. I like the fact that the lights allow you to draw more treasure, but really when it comes down to it, it's just, as she just indicated, a little boring for me. Um, and in fact, I, I like that there's three sections of the game, but the second section is almost identical to the first. The second section does introduce some C event cards. Every time that someone's moved, one of these C event cards is turned over, and either something bad happens to people or something good, depending on what cards you can discard. And that kind of keeps things interesting, but... All in all, while the game works well, and I like the components of the game and everything, I, I just, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing it having much staying power. It's a nice idea. It works well with the theme. I'm sure some people who love the book will play it and, and they'll think it's interesting. Collecting treasure is easy, but there's very little tenseness. There's very little innovativeness. What did you think of the game? It was really fun. Even though I lost, it was still fun. Even though it was my first time playing it. Right, and because the uh, the game says 10 and up, and Melody's 8, but, so, but the, what, what, so she was able to play it fairly well. Um, needed a little bit of help with the event cards and what they did. Uh, but the tool cards and everything else, I really think that anyone her age or higher can easily understand it. I played it with adults, and it was easily understood, easily able to explain it. Good quality. Um, the I don't know how colorblind folks will take the card. I mean, the cards have different pictures on them, but the three explorers on the raft all look identical. Just they're, yeah, they're just a different color on there. So overall, I don't know. I'm not I'm not gonna give this one really a good rating because while it's a it's an okay game, it's a good game, it plays well, and I can't really find any problems with it. It's just not that exciting. And I want a game to have at least a little bit of excitement in it. Did you think it was exciting? Yes. Well, there you go. The volcano part. The volcano part was exciting. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Except for the part even where if you, you have to lose treasure. Yeah, but even if you lose treasure in every space, I just didn't find that you lost enough that it really mattered that much. And so, I'm gonna have to give this one a thumbs down. While I see that Melody's giving it a thumbs up again. All right, so there you go. Journey to the center of the earth from Mayfair Games. Maybe it's up your alley, but it's a little too peaceful for me. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.